and we are live. Today, I'm very happy to have with me Graciela Dulce. Graciela is an energy worker, a spiritual advisor, and a fitness influencer. And the two of us met on set uh, probably a couple years ago now, was it, Graciela? Yeah, it's been like two, three years. Something like that. It kind of feels, in some ways, it feels like it was yesterday. And in other ways, it's like, has it really been that long? Uh, we, we met on a set of a short film that we were working on and uh, you know we kind of hit it off a little bit and then afterwards I became aware of what you were doing online I've been watching your videos and seeing the stuff that you've been putting out and so for me it's been kind of interesting to get this whole other side of Graciela because when I first met you and uh, started interacting with you on Facebook I hadn't started a podcast at that point and you we're still kind of getting yourself into doing the videos that you're doing. So I thought it was a good idea to uh, to have you on and have an opportunity for you to kind of talk about the stuff that you've been doing. And so just uh, thank you very much for agreeing to be here. Well, thank you so much for inviting me. Yeah, it's, uh, so the thing that we did together, I kind of saw that as like, uh, okay, you know, here's this person, um, you know, you kind of meet somebody and you're just sort of like, okay, you never really know exactly what's going to happen. And then I started to kind of see some of the stuff that you were doing online. And I was like, okay, wow, I was surprised to find out that you were competitive uh, in the fitness world and bodybuilding and things of that sort. And so um, that was like the first impression that I had of you. And then through the process of time then you started doing these videos and um the videos are very interesting they're very like spiritually driven and motivational and uh you've got a lot of very interesting things to say and also the way you project yourself as well is interesting and so uh, yeah just what, what was it that kind of pushed you in that direction so basically i started off with um fitness i was really huge into fitness um every day i would train very hard because i had to do the bodybuilding shows mm. and because i went into extremes and when i say extremes i mean like i went to the gym even when i was sick mm. like i went overboard um, this has been going on for a couple of years and I did shows back to back, which I would not recommend, but of <laughs> course I've learned from it. <laughs> hmm. Um, so because I was so extreme, um, after a couple of years, I got very sick. I had to go to the hospital very often hmm. because I would have panic attacks and anxiety attacks and all kinds of issues. Right. Sure. So... I would have to go to the hospital every night and the doctors, you know, they just took my blood and they always said, oh, there's nothing wrong with you. We don't know why you're having these issues. Mm -hmm. So at that point, I just realized that, you know, nobody can do anything about my issues. I have to be the one fixing them mm -hmm. because I'm the one who... You're experiencing it. Yes. You, like under you understand it in a way that nobody else will. Exactly. So this is when I got into spirituality because I just always knew that you have the power to heal yourself. Mm -hmm. I didn't know how. I didn't know what I was supposed to do. But I knew that that was the right thing to do, to, to go on my own journey and heal myself. So then I started getting into self-development and um, spirituality and I discovered a whole new world. Mm. You know, I've been doing um, healing on myself and um, some other people and I've been experiencing a huge, huge shift in my life in a positive That's way, amazing. of course. That's great. Yes. So, and I've seen that. I've seen that. The stuff that you've been putting out it's it's just kind of obvious like there's different ways a person if a person wants to be an internet influencer of, of of a sort you know there's different directions that you can go but when i saw what you were doing i was like 
okay, she's she's really bringing in um, a spiritual aspect to what it is that she's doing. It's not just about the fitness. It's also about the mindset as well. And I, I yeah, I think that's like a crucial component to the whole thing, right, is how you think about life. 100%. It's all about the body, mind, and soul connection. And people tend to separate this, but we all need to understand that this all connects. Hmm. Because if one is out of balance, then the other will be out of balance too. Sure. Yeah. And different people have different challenges in that regard, right? And trying to find that balance is... That's the real trick because it's it's not a one size fits all for everybody. Everybody kind of has different challenges, but at the same time, what you said and is something that I very much agree with is about finding your own healing, about uh, identifying that you yourself are the only one who's really will understand and know intimately what it is that you need in order to to achieve that balance, and. Um, I know that uh, for myself, I've had my own personal challenges in that regard. And it's it's interesting, though, to me to see things from the perspective of somebody who's um, competitively uh, competitive, competitive in fitness. And and um, I can imagine that environment can be very tense and a lot of pressure and a lot of like and then just that that constant um, focus on the physical it can throw the other out of whack, right? It's like you're 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 sort of focusing on one and, and not focusing on the others. 100%. Well, at that time, I was not in touch with my um, spiritual aspect of me because I was just all about physical, right? Mm -hmm. Like I was so into bodybuilding that I actually didn't care about anything else. Mm -hmm. It's still important though, right? It's not to throw the physical out completely. Um, that's something that, so growing up, I grew up, I've said this many times before, I grew up in a very spiritual environment, very religious environment, right? Uh, very spiritually focused, right? And then there's uh, different people who, they really have that focus in their life. What I found over time is that it was to some degree at the cost of the physical, because the physical was not seen as as important as the spiritual. So I think it's a, a very important discussion to have about balance and to see that everything is connected. Um, I, where I see it uh, from, let's say, like a, a spiritual perspective, I think some people, they have a perception of reality of, of, of the physical world as being evil in nature. And I think that in doing so, they reject the physical world. They reject the physical body and to their own uh, detriment. Because in terms of how it is that we, we re relate to the reality around us, I think our physical body is a crucial part of that, right? And if we are ignoring that, then you could be a spiritual as you want but if your body's in really bad shape then you know what i mean this it's really hard to enjoy life to its fullest potential so in terms of enjoying life to its fullest potential having having that balance i think is uh, is very important of course and you know in my personal experience um in the beginning i was all about the physical hmm. um after that i was all about the spiritual and I neglected my physical so yeah. I've been into both extremes and because I've been into both extremes sure. that's why I am able to keep in balance right now and uh it helps too when you start helping other people right when you um when you kind of start taking what you're learning and you're and you start kind of putting it out there I think that accountability um helps to bring balance so that's part of the reason why I wanted to do a podcast like this, because I want to talk about uh, physical challenges, because it's something that I do in podcasts. You know, I've, I've talked about different subjects and, and my general bend is towards topics of discussion that I hope will help people. And one of the things that I myself need help in my life with is with finding that physical balance. And part of the, the reason, the challenges as I see it is a lot of people, what ends up happening is they get overwhelmed by the responsibilities of life. 
they, uh, you know, it was just this kind of realization that I had at some point when I was a kid, you know, in elementary school and in high school, we always had um, our recess and, and lunch break where we can go out and play basketball and run around and all this kind of stuff. But in the working world, that doesn't really happen anymore, you know. And so there's there's these challenges that people face in life and keeping um, physical for some people is is a very difficult thing. Um, and I would kind of feel that some people might overly spiritualize as kind of a, a way of feeling like, okay, well, my physical life is not um, going that great, but at least I've got all my spiritual ducks in a row, you know? But um, in terms of experiencing the fullness of what life has to offer and enjoying the different aspects of it, Denying the physical, I think, is something that is to um, to to everyone's risk, right? Because the the older you get, the more that your quality of life degrades, and there's that uh, that real challenge that that people face, which is a reason to try to find some kind of physical balance in your life. You know, otherwise you're going to pay for it in the long run. Yeah. What um what is it that that inspires you on a spiritual level, like on an energetic level? What is it that you go after in terms of your inspiration? Just the feeling of wholeness, you know, to feel fulfilled. And to feel fulfilled, you got to take um, the body, mind, and spirit into consideration and pay attention to them equally. And that's when you're going to be fulfilled. Um, now, I, I do have some... Um, recommendations here because I feel like um, most people have very negative um, self-talk towards themselves. So the number one thing is to stop the negative self-talk because everything has energy. Mm. You know, your thoughts, your words, your actions, your intentions, everything has energy behind it. So if you constantly talk negative about yourself, then how can you expect a positive outcome? Mm. So that's number one. Number two, do everything with joy. You know, your work is only blessed if you do it with joy. If you don't bring joy into your life, then your life becomes very monotone. Mm. So really focus on enjoyment. Joy is a, it's a beautiful thing to go after. Right? It's um, so like for, for me growing up in a, a Christian context, I was taught that you would be filled with the spirit. You'd feel love, joy, peace, patience, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, self-control, right? These, these, uh, the fruits of the spirit as they're called, right? And it's, I believe it's a good thing to cultivate these things in your life, to, to focus on these uh, ideas, these energies, and then try to bring them in the way that you can. It's difficult though. It can be difficult, you know, like cultivating joy can be difficult when you have to go to work and, uh, you know, your, your coworkers giving you a hard time or something like that. But regardless of that, I think that the more that you focus on these things, the more that you open up the energy to kind of bring them into your life. Exactly. And, and that's what I was going to get at. Um, so basically know that not every day is the same. OK, um, some days you will have more energy um, than other times. So your, your energy level can depend on many different factors, like, you know, how much you work that day, um, your stress level, um, your food intake, both quality and quantity. Mm -hmm. Right. So just know that not every day is the same. So if you skip a day or two, don't beat yourself up for that. Right. Because if you force it, then there is no enjoyment in it anymore. Mm, then your sure. work is not going to be blessed. So always listen to your body no matter what. I like that. Yeah. No, that's good. It's uh, um, the the idea of wholeness. I really appreciate that. And I think it's a concept that just is something to to hold on to is is bringing that wholeness into your life and kind of 
um, feeling it out when you feel imbalanced and you kind of say like, okay, I, I need to go, I need to go outside right now. I need to go take a walk. I need to go just do something that's just purely physical. And, uh, and then other times to, uh, journal or to, um, to create positive intentions in your life. Self, um, confirmations of self right like st stuff that you're saying to yourself to make you feel better because that, that is very much something that i think people struggle with is that negative self-talk for sure mm -hmm. and that that goes very deep you know a lot of times it goes into because you know that's how your parents talk to you when you're a kid or something right or or any number of of uh of different traumas that can happen. That's something that, um, had a, on a previous podcast was talking about somebody who was a, a sexual trauma survivor. And that for me was something that I never had to go through something like that when I was a kid, but it made me realize that that is a struggle that a lot of people have is they have these very, very deep scars and trying to heal those things, um, is difficult, but not impossible. It's a it's a journey worth going on, though, wouldn't you say? Hundred percent. Nothing is impossible. Trust me. Um, you know, <laughs> at one point I actually felt like I was dying because I felt so numb and I had these horrible panic attacks that, um, you know, in the middle of the night I had to go outside to take a fresh air because I just felt so numb and I felt like I'm not on earth. Everything was spinning. Right. And then I had to go to the hospital night after night and it, it was a really bad time, but I had to take control of my life. So as hard as it was, but it was not impossible. It's all about the mindset and the willpower. You just have to have a strong willpower and um, determination. You know, you tell yourself that, yes, I can do this and I am going to overcome this. And then you will. And of course, patience that's that's a big one because it will take time mm -hmm. nothing and happens overnight right definitely not definitely not but there are some things that you can do that will ease your pain or your issue in that moment and that's mm -hmm. when i usually turn to meditation or prayer or journaling right but you gotta know what works for you that's a uh an important distinction knowing what works for you that that i think is a beautiful process that anybody can undertake um i believe that would be referred to in psychology Jungian psychology as individuation or at least it's uh, kind of connected to that it's just the, the idea that one size doesn't fit all everybody's different and what works for you might be different than what works for somebody else but what we have in common is we all have these environments that we live in and the more that we reshape our environments to serve us and to help us bring those things in that we need that i think is is kind of something that i've learned about the process of time is that uh, you know you, you might have an intention for something but then it'll take time some for, for things to come together in the right way you know um when we first moved into the house that i'm living in now the garage was a mess. Everything was all, you know, all over the place. It took time for me to organize everything and then get my weight set up and, you know, buy things to kind of like fill it up. And now it's kind of my little gym spot. Right. And, um, I think everybody kind of has maybe some similar problems and that is just kind of looking at the goal, looking at what it is that needs to be done and being able to visualize and then actually accomplish the task <laughs> the the action right be be behind the mentality exactly and you know this is what it comes down to like how do i enjoy the process right hmm. by not overwhelming yourself that's how hmm. you know it's good to have a plan definitely go with a plan but leave room for flexibility so if some days your plan don't go through it's not a big deal it's not the end of the world Right. Mm -hmm. Like you've got to be able to adjust. And that's when you're going to truly enjoy the process and not just the process, but your whole life. I, I'd say for. Where I'm kind of looking into this is like, you know, I've worked 
for the last 20 years, I've gone to different jobs and I've had to, you know, get up in the morning and go, go do this and sit in the car. And, and, um, where I finally got to is at some point I I started looking at the future and I started saying to myself, you know, in 10 years, who do I want to be? You know, where do I want to be? And what is it that I need to bring into my life in order to get me there? Because it's not just going to happen just like that, right? It, it requires, you know, if, if, if I wanted to be a successful film director, then I would have to learn the art of film. You know, I'd have to learn about cameras and I'd have to learn about where to place them and all that kind of stuff. You know, if I wanted to be a writer, I'd actually have to take the time to write a book. And, you know, and I think the body is like that too. You know, a body, the body is, is something that can be sculpted. It can be changed over a period of time. Um, not everybody's going to conform to the same um, ideals. But one thing that I think is something that is difficult for a lot of people is understanding how important the body is to an overall mindset. And I'm speaking from the perspective of somebody who I'm like, you know, I don't have it all together in that regard, but I understand that if I were to do this and do that and do the other thing, then I'm going to improve my situation that much more. You know, if I was to eat better and if I was to, you know, get some more exercise and do this and that, then I know that that is going to have better results over a period of time. What I think happens with a lot of people is that they get stuck into the fat, the fast food rat race, or, you know, they, uh, they go to work and the, the easiest thing for them to get is the thing that's in the vending machine. Um, and so that is a part, I think, of, of cultivating a whole mentality towards dealing with this kind of stuff is understanding that it's actually not that easy. It is kind of tricky. It's not just like, you know, snap your fingers and it's going to happen. It does require, to some degree, um, an intellectual perspective on the situation, and it requires you to take the proper action and reach, you know, like, transform your life essentially from the ground up. And, uh, that I think for a lot of people is like, is, is, is difficult. It's a, it's a difficult thing to try to, to understand sort of the basic the basic necessities in terms of like getting things together, you know? Um, what do you think? Well, everything starts with the mind first, right? You can only create if you have it in your mind first, you have to create it with your mind and then you can create it in your reality. So no matter what it is that you want to achieve, you have to have that strong willpower first and then you can take action. Um, So about the food, yes, it's it's actually the most important to start with the food because anybody can go to the gym and do some exercises, right? Or even at home, even if you don't go to the gym, yes, you can do some exercises at home. Mm -hmm. But it's in the kitchen where you start first. Mm. Um, Well, I'm going to create um, videos where I will um, show some healthy food recipes, both food and desserts. So that's something. And I've seen I've seen some of the food that you put up, and I'm like, oh, it looks so good. (laughs) So you're doing something over there for sure. So yeah, I think uh, that'll be really, really good to to see that. I really want more. to help people as well, and um, you know, I'm I always encourage people to to stay healthy, um, not just to exercise, like I said, but also in the kitchen, and that's my big passion. Um, I'm like in the kitchen every day, so I always do something in the kitchen every day. Um, and you know, it's not like it's always been my passion. I actually did not like um, to cook in the beginning. It mm. was a challenge for me, but something that I had to learn to like and mm. learn to enjoy. But because I, I had such a strong intention to better myself, you know, mm. over the time I was able to um, make um, food and dessert that actually tasted really good. And they were Mm. healthy too. So I developed a passion for it. So see, Mm. everything takes time. I think that's a really important thing for anybody who's trying to get healthy. I would, I totally agree with you. I think number one is to change how you eat. 
because you can eat amazing food. You can eat food that's so much better than fast food if you know how to make it yourself and you know what you like to eat. And that's something that uh, I, I, I've, I've also been doing that as well. I just find that I'm happiest when I'm making my own meals. And it's something that didn't happen overnight, you know, like the, I'll tell you the, the first thing that I learned to do to me that is like cooking 101 was how to properly cook an egg, you know, like how to properly fry an egg or something like that. Where it's just like, it, it's, it's like a small little thing, but this is kind of almost something that I would suggest to anybody, like learn how to fry an egg. <laughs> just start with that. You know what I mean? Like watch some videos or like something like that, but just learn and, and like learn basic, um, temp how to, how to maintain the temperature on the stove and like things like that. Like when, when you start getting into that, it's almost like an exercise itself, right? Cause you're moving around and you know, you got to wash the dishes and you got to make sure that everything's in its place. And it's kind of like an exercise in and of itself. So I really think that, yeah, like number one, food is, is if you can transform the way, transform the way that you eat, then from there, it'll open up a lot of doors, I think, to transforming, you know, your, your other parts of your life as well. Of course. And start something, start with something easy, right? Yeah. Like, I, like I said before, you don't want to overwhelm your stuff because then, you know, you're not going to enjoy it. So start with something easy. So what and, did you do uh, in the beginning? Like, what kind of stuff did you start off with when, when you were like, what was it that you were like, oh, okay, now I can cook. Like now I know how to make food for myself. And I've, I've seen you do, yeah, you do like a lot of kind of salads and, and uh, desserts and things like that, but they always look like super delicious. <laughs> well, they are. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, obviously I did not um, do any desserts in the beginning because right. that's a little bit more complex, but um I started off with just cooking eggs, like you said, um, making stews because they are a little bit easy to sure. um, soup. I'm, I'm big on soup. So yeah. Yeah. that's something I had to learn. And, you know, if you can make what, soup like soup is so cost effective, right? Like not yeah. only will it f will it fill your belly for like, you know, a couple days, but like, it, 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 you know, for 10 bucks, you can make like enough food for a week if you want to. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, you know, there was actually a study. It's quite interesting. It was about um, cleaning ladies, how they divided them into two groups. And one of the group was told that every time they move, they are burning calories. Mm. The other group was given no instructions. Mm, interesting. And at the end of it, when they compared the two groups, the one that were told that with every move they are burning calories, mm. they actually lost weight over a period of time. So this is a really good, um, you know, fact to bring into your mind that I love it. Yeah. Every time you move, it mm. does not have to be an exercise or in the gym. Right. You can do cleaning. You can do cooking. You can do laundry. Whatever it is. Yeah. Turn the music on and start dancing. Exactly. Bring it to yeah. your mind that now I'm burning calories because mm. I'm moving. Yeah, sure. Yeah. And that's, um, I, I think that's a good, like talking about stagnation, right? I think that's kind of the problem. Like I was saying before, when you're we kids, you know, we always, we, we would have recess where we'd go and be able to play whatever we want. But what happens, you get older and you're sitting everywhere, right? You're sitting at work, you're sitting at, in your car and, and, and you become stagnant. And if you could just kind of like see it as that, you know, just like any movement, whatever is, is a way of kind of uh, pushing that stagnation off. Um, that is, is something that I like, I enjoy going into, I'll go into the garage now and I'll pop my music on and I'll start lifting weights and stuff like that. But like part of, you know, what I enjoy is not just lifting the weights, it's moving around, you know what I mean? The music's going and stuff like that. And I'm kind of, you know, I have like a little private space where I could just kind of be silly. Right. But that right there, just the moving around and, and, uh, um, bringing in the positivity too. Right. That's another thing. Music is so so helpful in that regard finding the right song it can really lift you out of a bad place um it, it kind of does beg the you know just the observation anyways of just what it is that we indulge ourselves in 
And um, I think that as human beings, sometimes we do in t- tend to indulge in things that eh, they might not be the best for us, but it's almost like a guilty pleasure or something, right? But there is a there is a reality to the more that you feed yourself positive things, the more that you're going to have a positive outlook on life, the more that you're going to feel better about yourself. And that sometimes I think is is maybe difficult for some people who kind of like to indulge in the negativity. Um, it's almost like they they don't want to be positive, and so they they feed on those things. And um, I I find myself doing that from time to time. You know, sometimes I'm I'll be watching a show or something like that, and I'm just like. Uh, you know, it's kind of bringing me down, you know what I mean? And there's that question, there's that question of, of how much do you really want to indulge in that kind of stuff? You know, it's all about awareness. Mm. If you catch yourself um, thinking anything negative or um, doing negative self-talk, mm. just reverse it by saying or thinking something positive. Mm. You know, it will balance it out. And you just keep saying positive things to yourself. And eventually it will become a habit and it will become a part of your personality when where now you're just only positive. Mm -hmm. And that's something I had to learn too. You know, I'm I'm sometimes I, I still have those times where I catch my stuff. I'm like, oh, this is negative. Don't think that. Mm -hmm. You know, but the good thing is that I am very aware and I I do notice when you know i think something negative and i right away turn it into something positive and my whole energy just lifts up and my whole aura changes right away Mm -hmm. it's um it's it's tricky because we live in a world that allows both you know what i mean like in any moment you could just be overwhelmed with the negativity. I mean, you turn on the news and just find how many different things to, to feel don't bad about, it. to feel depressed about. <laughs> that's and the that's the answer. thing, right? I yeah. personally don't. I personally, <laughs> and I'm not, I'm not saying you have to do this, but right. I personally don't even have a TV. Like I right. don't watch TV. Right. And that's why I am able to stay centered and just focus on my style. Um, yeah, that's that's just it's one of those things where I think if you look at your life and you're kind of examining all the things that are going on in it and you're honest with yourself about, you know, what is it that is um, really not providing, you know, like I think it provides me enjoyment, but it, it really isn't. And um, if I was doing this and I was doing that and the other, um, would I not be happier than I am now? And uh, yeah, like we we get caught in those ruts. We get caught in, in, in our apathy or we get caught in just like our cycles that we go through. We're just going with the flow. And then at some point you kind of like, all right, you know, I don't do anything anymore. I'm not uh, interested in anything. I don't have hobbies. I don't have, and, and, um, everything's always there. It's always there. It's always, if you want to go find it, it's there, but, if you choose to kind of just stay in that place of darkness and upsetness and depression, then that's not going to change, you know? And, and, um, I think the problem is for some people is that they, they are scared. They kind of feel like, uh, they, they get caught in, in their little bubble and they become scared of going out of it because, uh, I don't know. They're just, they're scared of, of what might happen. They, they, uh, become antisocial. Exactly. And, What this is, is people are afraid to get out of their comfort zone, even though they know they have, um, you know, a negative um, impact Mm -hmm. because of the TV or whatever that they are doing. They know that it has a negative impact on them, Mm -hmm. but it's really hard for them to move away from it because that's what they are used to. That's that's their comfort zone. And it's right. hard to move out of the comfort zone. And that's when you take baby steps and do something different every day. Mm. And, baby you know, steps. That's, yep. exactly. That's how I started. Mm. Right. Like we talked about it before. It doesn't just happen overnight. Yeah. But you've yeah. got to get out of your comfort zone. You know, when I used to sit in bed, I was so sick. I couldn't even lift up my arms. My fiance had to feed me. 
Wow. That's how weak I was. Mm. I did not have the energy to lift up my arms to eat. And, you know, at, for a while, I was just in my comfort zone. I knew that it had a very negative effect on me, but I was afraid that, okay, so if I get out of this, then what? Really? What am I going to do? How am I going to feel? Mm. Because, yes, anxiety is very negative, but this is what I know. This is all I know. I don't mm. know what enjoyment feels like, and I'm mm. scared of that. Mm. And then, then for you, is that... Was that like when you were in sort of that competition mode and and just kind of like, uh, I, I feel like that is just kind of very kind of intense place to be to the point where you could very potentially burn yourself out yeah. and and kind of, yeah, not necessarily be able to see, okay, like, well, what about, what, what after this, you know, like after all the competition's gone or like, what, you know, where do I go from there? Uh, is that, was that like a, like a place of fear for you? Yes, 100%. Like I said in the beginning, I was all about bodybuilding and I didn't really care about anything else. Um, I didn't know what I wanted to do with my life. So I just ran into the bodybuilding. My comfort zone was the gym. Mm -hmm. I was living there, you know. <laughs> sure. um, was it so sort of a, I had to a break place that. of safety for you? It was a place of safety. Like I said, I, I had to break this cycle because... Um, of course, going to the gym is very good. I still recommend that I still go to the gym, but nothing is healthy if you go overboard. Like, don't, you know, fall into the other side. Right now, you're completely into extremes like I was. Mm -hmm. And that's, uh, and now, like, this is kind of the, the thing in life, right, is that we go through these mountains and valleys. And sometimes it's not until we get to the, you know, to the end of a certain part of our journey that we kind of take a look back and kind of go like, okay, you know, like that was pretty cool. There was some good stuff there, but it wasn't perfect. And I, I can't stay where I'm at. I've got to like, you know, move forward, but I got to know what to keep and what to leave behind. Well, it's all about the balance. Like I said, you know, ever since I started enjoying uh, myself and my workouts, I feel so much better. I get so much more out of my workouts. Um, I look better. Um, the other thing is that I've changed um, is my diet. Mm. Um, now, not everybody has to follow this, but what I found that really helped me is to become vegan. Wow. So, I, yes, I eat vegan, I eat gluten-free, I eat soy-free. And despite all this, I'm still able to make very healthy and nutritious and delicious food. Right on. How, how do you uh, just give me like a sort of a, an easy example of things that you've done to sort of replace what you're getting from meat and how you're getting that in your food now? So instead of meat... You can do legumes like beans, um, chickpeas, lentils, because mm. they have a lot of protein in them. Um, I don't miss meat at all. <laughs> I'm very happy with my current diet. Mm. Um, so there is always a replacement for everything. And, you know, if let's say I take a recipe from online, right, mm. and I don't like some ingredients, I just mm. simply switch them out. I just take a substitute for all of them and it still works. Yeah. That's, I think, something when people get into cooking, sometimes they get intimidated because they feel like they've got to follow the recipe down to the T, right? And uh, one thing I learned about cooking is that, no, the, the, the beauty of cooking is making food that you like. Exactly. Like, that's, the, that's the best thing about it, right? And, you know, you just use the spices that you like because it's the spices that really bring out the flavors, sure, right? Sure, sure. So if in a recipe it says something, 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 and then you don't like that, you just simply take it out and replace right. it with something that you like. Yeah. So yeah. you don't have to go by the book. You don't have to go by the recipe because it will create this rigid uptightness, you know, yeah. feeling. And you just want to go with the flow. Enjoy yeah, I, it. I used to get overwhelmed when I watched cooking shows. Like I used to like watching cooking shows, but then at some point I was like, man, 
how can anybody afford the amount of ingredients that they have on a regular basis, right? But then at some point, I, it kind of clicked for me, and I was just like, uh, um, just learning how to cook simple foods, learning how to cook food that my mom used to make, that my grandma used to make, just the flavors that I really like. The more that I kind of started going in that direction, the more that I started to create my own style. And now it's like, if I want to go eat something, like, I'm like, I want to go have a taco, like, I'll go make a taco, you know, or like, whatever, right? And it's, um, it's liberating to be able to do that. And the more that you do it, the more that you find that, okay, I really don't need this as much, you know, like bread, for example, is something that I, I hardly eat anymore, because of the things that I was kind of like, okay, what is it that's contributing to my weight gain? It's like, all right, well, I'm pretty sure bread, cheese, you know, kind of things, anything kind of in that realm. And like when you think of a hamburger, like that's that's what a lot of people are eating, right, when they're eating the fast food. There's something that you said that I really liked, and um, I think we're maybe getting close to wrapping up here. But uh, what you said that I think is really important, and it's something for anybody, no matter what their body type is. And I, I think it's something that I'm really trying to get in my own head and and really – just nail it in there hard. And that is how you feel when you're working out or when you're cooking or whatever. Um, and I understand what you're saying about making a switch where you started to actually enjoy your workouts. You started to enjoy cooking. Um, I can see how that would have been different than, you know, if you're like in an again, like an uber competitive mode, then you're not necessarily, you're not necessarily there for the enjoyment of it. Um, it's, it's a different mentality entirely, but to, to actually be doing it because you enjoy it and because you like it and you're sort of having fun with it. I think that's the real trick. That's what I think is, is, is the crucial, uh, is the crucial point for people who have a hard time, um, learning how to, to enjoy cooking or exercise or something is trying to make that switch in their minds. Yes. And, you know, like I said, you always want to leave room for flexibility. Like, you know, sometimes I go into the gym planning that I'm going to do certain exercises. And by the end of it, I will be so tired that I won't be able to finish my last exercise. Right. Mm. Back in the days, I would push it no matter mm. what. And I would be so exhausted that the next day I barely had energy to even do my workouts halfway. And then right. I pushed that even more, right? Mm. But what mm. do I do now? When I feel like I'm getting really exhausted, mm. I just simply stop. Mm. I do some stretches or some yoga exercises and that's it. Mm. Because you always want to come back the next day feeling motivated, feeling full of energy, mm. you know. Of course, like I said, you want to have a plan. You want to have something to kind of follow through. But you also want to listen to your body. So don't beat yourself up if you can't finish your workouts. Because like I said, every day is different. Maybe your energy is not, you know, very high this day. But that's okay. You know, you come back the next day and you're going to have even better workouts. Yeah, I think um, there's definitely something to be said about understanding intimately that we're kind of like batteries that sort of need to charge and recharge. And the more that you take care of that energy and sort of understand how it works, the more that you can just, I'd say, just balance it out and feel better in general, right? Um, but understanding, I think, that, that 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 is to some degree how our brains work and our bodies work and and reconfirming to ourselves positive things and reprogramming ourselves as well if we have negative self-talk and that i think is very very difficult like i would say for for a lot of people that is going to be the real trick is trying to to switch that negative self-talk but it's not impossible and i think uh, that's the reason to have a conversation like this is just to, to to sort of bring bring light to that and understand that there is a, a holistic approach to yourself as an individual, your your personal healing, and ultimately getting to a place in your life where you you do feel like you're firing on all cylinders and you do feel like you have that kind of, you know, that that balance in your life that's sustainable and you're not just shedding energy all the time, you know? 
Yes, and you know, this also doesn't give you an excuse to let laziness overtake you, right? Mm -hmm. Like you truly have to listen to your body. So if you feel like you're truly tired, then stop. But like I said, don't let, like if this is not an excuse, mm -hmm. you know, to be lazy and be like, oh, you know, I'm right. too tired today. Right. No, it's you still balance, have to. Dude. Yeah, you still have to push yourself, but don't over push yourself. That's what I'm trying to say. Sure, sure. Everything always has sort of like its cost and, and you know, its benefit, right? There's always like a little bit of a drawback and a benefit to everything. And, and understanding that balance, because life, I think, is all about balance, right? Everything is just in a constant state everything. of just... Right. Um, I mean, you know, even down to the atoms, it's all about these these small particles that are in balance with each other. So I think it's, it's an important thing to to kind of consider in the mind. And I I, I feel like uh, for myself personally, there's certain uh, preconceived notions about life that I had to strip down, and in doing so, it kind of led me into uh, a bigger discussion about spirituality and energy and self-care and all these kinds of things. And what I kind of see is that they're all connected, but it's sort of like you achieve new understandings in life. Right. And, um, I understand in my mind that having a good balance with the physical is important. Executing that over time that I think is the challenge that people have. And as far as anybody listening to the podcast and, you know, what is it that uh, we're, we're kind of trying to say here? And I think it's just trying to strike that balance is not something that happens overnight, but it is a journey that's worth going on. And uh, Graciela, I'm very appreciative that, uh, that you came and had this conversation. Is there anything that you'd like to say before we uh, wrap up here? Well, you know, if anybody has any questions, also feel free to reach out. I'm here to support people and I absolutely love helping people. That's definitely one of my big passions. So feel free to reach out and, you know, I'll be there for people. Whatever uh, help you need with, I can definitely help. And if I can't help, then I will tell you, but I will definitely give my best. Where can people find you? Um, well, so I have my YouTube channel. Um, which I'm still um, developing, but I'm more active on Instagram. Okay. So YouTube and Instagram, I'll put links in the comments for the show. Yes. And uh, yeah, I, I think that um, in the future, um, you know, I, I kind of know who listens to, to the podcast and I wouldn't be surprised if maybe you get a couple of messages from, from some people saying like, Hey, I, I wouldn't mind some, uh, some help some advice and uh, I, I I'm sure that uh, Graciela appreciates donations so anybody uh, who wants to go in her direction and get some help I'm, I, I know that she's willing to do that so on that note uh, thank you very much Graciela for, for coming in and being on the show today thank you so much it was a pleasure talking to you it was a pleasure for me as well thank you everybody for listening have a good day bye